The Sun Crusher was one of the most powerful super weapons in Star Wars Legends. Today, I'll explain how Han Solo and Kip Duran turned the vessel against its creators. The Sun Crusher. Much has been said about this weapon. In many ways, it represents the worst part of Star Wars Legends. It was silly, overpowered, but you know what, also kind of cool. The Sun Crusher appears in the Jedi Academy trilogy. It's stolen from a hidden Imperial research station in the Maw Cluster. The New Republic receives it, tries to destroy it, and it's later stolen by Kip Duran, who goes somewhat crazy with anger and lust for revenge before returning to the light side. Today though, I'm going to talk about the Sun Crusher's first battle, where it faced off against the fleet of Natasi Dalla. As a note, the Sun Crusher was nearly totally impervious to damage and was made out of some sort of special space armor. It was also capable of making a star supernova and was as small and fast as a starfighter. It starts when Han and Chewie are taken prisoner and forced to work on the spice mines of Kessel. There, they meet a force sensitive young man named Kip Duran and with his help, escape the planet. We'll come back to those two, but as this was all happening, Luke Skywalker and Lando Calrissian, who were of course looking for their two friends, arrived on Kessel and spoke to Administrator Morith Duel. He said he had no idea where the two were. However, Luke was able to find the Millennium Falcon on planet, which he stole. Realizing that if he didn't stop the escape of Luke Skywalker, the New Republic would come down on Kessel, Duel sent the planetary fleet to try to destroy the Falcon. As this was happening, Han, Chewie, and Kip Duran had just escaped. They were traveling through the Maw, a cluster of difficult space near Kessel, when they encountered a secret research facility. They were almost immediately captured and interrogated. Maw installation was under command of an admiral known as Natasi Dalla, who had been separated from the rest of the galaxy from before the Battle of Endor. The station was guarded by four Imperial Star Destroyers and used to produce super weapons, including one known as the Sun Crusher. On Maw installation, they met a somewhat confused Imperial research scientist known as Kui Jukes. Kui, who didn't really seem to understand the ramification of developing super weapons for a tyrannical government, joined the trio and the four escaped in the Sun Crusher. This was unacceptable to Dala, who recognized the importance of the super weapon and moved her four Star Destroyers, as well as their TIE Fighter complement, to block the escape. Han elegantly dealt with this by flying the Sun Crusher straight through the bridge of one of the Star Destroyers, the Hydra, which then fell into one of the Maw's black holes. The Sun Crusher, of course, was totally fine. The TIE Fighters did manage to disable some of the ship's laser cannons, however, they were also promptly defeated and forced to retreat. As the vessel made its escape, Natasi Dalla did not give up and ordered her three remaining Star Destroyers, the Basilisk, the Gorgon, and the Manticore, to follow the ship. As the Imperial forces and the Sun Crusher exited the Maw, they ran headfirst into the Kessel Defense Fleet. And for the record, calling it a fleet is fairly generous. It had some CR-90s, a few Karak cruisers and Lancer frigates, and perhaps a couple of strike cruisers. Those ships, along with any starfighters that they could throw together, including X-Wings and TIE fighters, went up against the might of three Imperial Star Destroyers. Now, really, these two factions weren't actually enemies, but there was a total lack of communication here, and each side became totally hostile. As this was happening, the good guys in the Millennium Falcon and the Sun Crusher jumped away unnoticed to hyperspace. The Kessel Defense Force, which was little more than a pirate fleet, had no strategy, and upon seeing their enemy, a good portion of the ships immediately jumped away. After that, it was a slaughter, with the lighter ships falling relatively easy. The only damage done to the Imperials was when a strike cruiser got a little too close to the Basilisk, one of the Star Destroyers, and damaged the larger ship after it was destroyed. But all in all, the Imperial losses were negligible while almost the entirety of the pirate fleet was destroyed, with the only remaining survivors forced to retreat. And this marks the end of, let's be honest, a pretty wacky battle and the introduction of the Sun Crusher to the greater Star Wars universe. It would go on to take a glancing shot from a Death Star prototype, survive the intense pressure of a gas giant, and was only finally destroyed 
by being thrown into the Maw. There are however lots of other stories to tell here, and the Jedi Knight trilogy has lots of fun moments, although I don't love the trilogy as a whole. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video and of course what you'd like to see next. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment. Until next time guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, may the Force be with you.